What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most disgusting things WWE wrestlers were forced to do. Now, when I see stuff like this, this automatically makes me think of Vince McMahon booking. Vince McMahon had a weird sense of humor. If you guys didn't know, he would have you do some embarrassing things because he thought it was funny, not because the fans would think it was funny you know what i'm saying that's just how vince was you know whatever he thought was a joke or comical that's what he would probably put on the television a lot of times it came off his cringe so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support let's get right into this man to toast with the one thing that you are classic flow. segment oh, no. oh my god if you watch wrestling, you know that WWE wrestlers do much more than just wrestle. They give emotional speeches, have weddings, determine yeah. custody of their children in ladder matches. You know, normal stuff. Yep. <laughs> but sometimes the stuff wrestlers are told to do is honestly really disgusting. Look at his face and his lips. That's oh my God! So let's go through them, starting with Roman Reigns' first feud in 2020 oh, was against Baron Corbin. The dog For whatever food. reason, their rivalry really played up Roman's nickname at the time, yeah, the, big dog. the Big Dog. Corbin, along with Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler, taunted Reigns and even poured dog food on him yeah, one the time. Dog food. Well, that was kind of disgusting. It was nothing compared to what Roman did to Baron Corbin. Reigns and the Usos teamed up to take on Corbin, Ziggler, and Roode in a tag team match. Whoever lost would be forced to eat buckets of dog food. Well, Corbin ended up losing, so you know what happened next. The Usos and Roman Reigns drenched Baron in the canine food. Yuck. I don't know what WWE actually used, but I would not want to have that stuff dumped on me. Yeah. When Sheamus returned to WWE in 2015, not only did he have a new look, but also a new attitude. The Celtic Warriors surprised everyone and attacked Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan on his first night back. Mm -hmm. This set into motion a match between Sheamus and Ziggler at Extreme Rules. But it wasn't just a normal match. It was a kiss my arse match. Whoever lost would have to kiss the other man's butt. Neither I wrestler won any all of about that. that. But still, someone had to lose, and that person was Sheamus. Despite the stipulation, the Irishman was yep, a sore I loser and attacked Dolph. Not only that, but Sheamus then grabbed Ziggler by the head and forced him into his right cheek. It's bad enough having your face smothered by another man's buttocks, but making it even worse is the fact that these two had just wrestled for nine minutes and were sweaty and smelly. Yeah, yeah if such I was a Dolph Ziggler, I would have just called him sick that day. Stipulation. In 1996, uh. Triple H was involved in the infamous curtain call incident where the game Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Shawn Michaels broke character during yep. a WWE show. WWE was mad at all four men. But Triple H was the only one who got punished. Uh -huh. Part of that punishment was competing in a hog pen match. The only way to win was to throw your opponent inside a pig pen. The pen was filled with mud and live pigs. Not to mention a lot of other things that got mixed into it. Now Triple H did win, but he still ended up getting messy. The game was slammed onto the slop and became covered in filth. The future COO of WWE <laughs> had to bump and roll around in all that junk which was pretty disgusting. While Triple H would go on to become one of the most respected wrestlers of all time, he definitely didn't look like it during this not, match. Not at that point. I don't know if someone in WWE hated Tommy Dreamer or what, but in May of 2002, the heart and soul of ECW had to do some awful things. WWE began a storyline where Dreamer was quote, just a regular guy. We would see Tommy doing all sorts of things, like getting a cup of water from a urinal and then drinking it. That's actually one of the least disgusting ones. We also saw Dreamer brushing his dog's teeth and then using the same brush to clean his own. Later, Tommy Dreamer went to get his hair cut and then ate it. How exactly was this entertaining? Later, the hardcore icon asked a fan eating a hot dog if he could have a bite. The fan ended up dropping the hot dog to the floor, but that didn't stop Tommy Dreamer. He wiped up the dog and took a bite out of it. This is horrifying. Although If that ain't got Vince McMahon written all over it, I don't know what I don't know what what constitutes that Vince McMahon booking because this is who just thought we're gonna have Tommy Dreamer just do stupid shit, go around doing disgusting stuff. Why? Who who said that was a good idea? Like what the hell, bro? Though, another fan took a bite out of the hot dog too, so I guess Tommy isn't the only sick person. As Dreamer was having a bite to eat, The Undertaker came out. 
I can't believe they dragged him into this too. The dead man gave Tommy Dreamer a cup filled with Taker's tobacco spit, and yes, he actually spit into it. And Tommy Dreamer actually drank it. I don't need to say anything. Undertaker's face sums up all this perfectly. Oh my god! The Undertaker was like, what? You know you on some sick shit when that's even too much for the dead man. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, that was Would awful, Would normally bro. be a pretty forgettable wrestler had it not been for his gimmick. He was a big, gluttonous, unkept man and was probably the grossest wrestler in WWE history, and this is all intentional. Now, Bastion yeah. himself never had to do anything that was particularly disgusting, but his opponents did. Booger's finisher was named Trip to the Bat Cave. That's because Booger would sit down on his opponent with his crotch right in their face. Not only did you have a huge man suddenly sitting on top of you, but you also had his junk right next to your mouth. Thankfully for the WWE roster, Bastion Booger wasn't around for long, but he still managed to take a few trips to the Batcave before leaving the company. One of DX's most memorable That's... rivalries was against the commands mm -mm, and the I'm good squad. on it. The two went at it throughout 2006, and the best moments were usually the ones created by Triple H and mm -hmm. Shawn Michaels. During one episode of Raw, Triple H impersonated Vince McMahon and made fun of them. Shawn Michaels came out later, appropriately dressed. <laughs> classic, and classic, McMahon. funny segment. Eventually, man. the real McMahons came out along with the Spirit Squad. Unfortunately for them, DX had a little surprise. Oh, yeah. oh my God, King! That's some real holy crap. It literally came from the heavens. Now, of course, the stuff that fell on them wasn't the real deal. I, I don't think. But I still, would, would you want to have whatever this is dropped on you? I wouldn't. No. Say what you will about Michael Cole, but the man is a trooper. He's been with WWE for 25 uh -huh. years and does whatever they ask him to do. Yep. And I mean that. In 2011, Cole began a feud with his fellow Raw commentator, Jerry Lawler. It was one of the worst rivalries in WWE history, Facts. and it went on for way too long. The thing finally came to an end at Over the Limit, where Jerry Lawler beat Cole in a Kiss My Foot match. This one was similar to the Kiss My Arse match, but much nastier. You want to know why? Well, first, Jim Ross poured barbecue sauce into Michael Cole's mouth and all over his face. Then, Bret Hart came out, locked Michael Cole in the sharpshooter, and then Jerry Lawler made Cole kiss his foot. Ugh. That's just miserable. Uh. Unfortunately for Cole, a year later, he'd be put in a match against John Cena. First, Cena ripped off the commentator's clothes, exposing way too much of Michael Cole, and then he poured sauce all over Cole's body. Did a WWE writer have a barbecue fetish or something? This was just sick. But luckily, Michael Cole's lost yeah. his state of the ring ever since. I, I will say this, man. They were doing, even though Michael Cole was quite unbearable uh, for, uh, for a period, they were booking him into some, like, crazy humiliating situation so i'm glad they are past that that's all this the boogeyman was one of the sickest WWE oh, wrestlers yeah. of all time uh, it was pretty disgusting the worms. Eating worms every week however what earns boogeyman's worms a spot on this list is the poor victims that were forced to consume uh, the crawlies. big veto had to eat them at armageddon in 2005 well, Lunzio, the dicks and many others all had to open wide and chow down on the invertebrates as well they really took that Goosebumps book seriously. Uh, oh my God. Oh, no, 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 Maybe it isn't that bad, but still, uh, you won't catch me uh, in uh, worms. Uh, Eddie Guerrero's death in 2005 uh, was one of the saddest days in all of wrestling. Of course, In the months after this great loss, Rey Mysterio, one of Eddie Guerrero's closest friends, received a major push. He entered the 2006 Royal Rumble and outlasted everyone. Mm -hmm. The victory earned him a world championship match at WrestleMania and was a real feel-good moment. A few days later on SmackDown, Rey kicked off the show to celebrate the accomplishment. However, the moment was interrupted by Randy Orton. Now, by itself, this oh, wouldn't have been anything segment. memorable. However, Orton decided to say this. Yeah, this Eddie is... Eddie ain't in heaven. Eddie's down there. This was cold, bloody. This was cold, This bloody, was the bro. moment where the whole thing went too far. Yeah. Sure, Randy was just following the script, but it felt in poor taste to use Guerrero's death to get a reaction and to get fans to buy the next pay-per-view. Orton himself later said that he was 100% uncomfortable with it. Speaking of Eddie, of did course. you know his daughter wrestled in WWE? To find yeah, that's, that's, wait, did they say his daughter wrestled in WWE? His daughter wrestled in WWE? To find out who she is, watch this.
Betty, did you know that his Wayne. self later said what? that he was 100% uncomfortable I didn't know that. with that? Speaking of Eddie, did you know that his daughter wrestled in WWE? To find out who she is, watch this video. Wow, didn't know that, man. Um, but yeah, bro, that that's yeah, man. That 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 was that was kind of a, a messed up situation. Randy Orton himself said he didn't feel comfortable with doing that. Once again, sounds like a Vince McMahon thing to capitalize on the situation. Vince McMahon has been known to capitalize on real life personal situations. I will say this, probably wouldn't have did that because, you know, it's too fucking soon for something like that. He's a real human being and they just kind of turned that angle into something else. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. But there were some disgusting things that wrestlers had to do for our entertainment comment down below let me know what was the most disgusting thing from this video y'all uh, uh y'all saw me personally the tommy dreamer with the tobacco spit oh ugh. from the undertaker it legit makes me want to gag uh, appreciate all the love and support man road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace